ESRB notice game experience may change. I didn't even get the chance to read that. There is not a good place for this sensor, I swear. Because, like, I'm just chilling at my desk. I'm in a super, super confined space. As you guys can see, I have the sensor right there on my keyboard. But that's that's still a really bad place for it. Like, it keeps cutting out. And I have no idea how to solve this. Um, I mean, I guess the solution would be to try and back it up a little bit more. But the problem is, is that, as you guys saw, I don't have a lot of space. Actually, that kind of works. That kind of works. I just got to point it up a little bit. Anyways, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Pokemon Battle Revolution. We got a wrist strap sound. We got the Wii Remote in hand. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you guys so much for supporting the series. If you guys did miss the previous episode, it went up over on Friday. Definitely make sure to go back and check it out. It was a freaking incredible start to this series. But anyways, here we are back again with one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Pokemon side game of all time. We're going to keep going with the Coliseums. I'm trying to make it through the Gateway Coliseum right now. And uh, we're gonna see what happens, but thank you guys so much for your support you guys are freaking beautiful not gonna lie I'm recording this before episode one is even dropped uh, So I have no idea how you guys enjoyed the series or if you guys even enjoyed the series But I'm actually editing that episode right now. It's so far so good I'm really 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 proud of it. So hopefully you guys are digging it. But anyways, there's quick save data from your I, I literally said I wasn't gonna give her an annoying voice. Why do I keep coming back to something extremely obnoxious? I don't know. Maybe I should just give in. Maybe I should just give her an obnoxious voice because obviously that's what my mouth wants to do. There's a quick save data from your last Coliseum battle. Okay, sweet. Would you like to resume Gateway Coliseum's rental battle from where you quick saved? Yes, I would absolutely love to. Instead of doing all the tutorial, well, there really wasn't a tutorial. There really was not a tutorial to this game in the last episode, which is actually kind of sweet. That's one thing that I never really realized about this game is there literally is no tutorial, which is actually awesome. Like... That is, that is one thing that I never noticed about the game, but that's high key actually amazing. Anyways, though, um, so yeah, in the last episode, we got through all the preliminary preliminary stuff. We fought our first battle. We picked our, our trainer class here. We got Cindy. I'm pretty sure we can switch between Nate and Cindy. So even though I did have that straw pull uh, down on Twitter in the last episode, that doesn't mean we're necessarily stuck with this team. And actually, I did some research on it. Um, I did some research on Battle Revolution because I haven't played this game in forever and I wasn't quite sure how this worked But you can actually unlock more rental passes as you progress through the game But the only thing about that is that you have to go back and beat the this this Coliseum the Gateway Coliseum You have to go back and beat this every single time you unlock a new pass in order to use it in the other Coliseums It's really and heroically against an insult the announcer speak a Poketopia at night Poketopia at night hell yeah um, so yeah, the only thing about it is that I'm gonna have to go back and I'm gonna have to face the Gateway Coliseum every single time I want to use a new, a new rental pass. So I'll probably be doing that off camera. I don't really want to fight the same Coliseum a bunch of different times in the actual series. It's not like this is a Nuzlocke or anything, so, um, you know, we could totally just, like, do those battles off camera, maybe do them in a stream. I don't know, whichever you guys want to see, but let me know what you guys think of the series so far. I really, really want to push to have these episodes edited, uh, as much as possible. Like, I'm going absolutely ham, uh, with the first episode, and I'm really, really proud of that, and I really, really want to continue doing that, ideally, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep up with it. I wanted to go ham with the first episode, but we'll see what happens. Um, Anticipate each other's moves. Anticipate each other's moves. I do want to prioritize consistency over uh, basically anything else. And also, with these trips coming up, I'm going to be going on vacation. I'm going to be gone for like half of June. So, uh, if I start bulk recording, I might have to start bulk editing, which might mean some less edits here and there. But hopefully, you guys enjoy the series regardless. Hopefully, you guys uh, enjoy the content regardless. And actually, I just got an update from my uh, from the GFX artist. His name is Les. Big shout out to him, by the way. He's an absolute legend. He's been coming through with the uh, the Uranium GFX he made, and he absolutely killed it. And he's also coming through with our next solo LP, our next real solo LP that's going to be replacing Uranium. I keep calling, like, this secret series real as opposed to Battle Revolution not being real. Uh, and I feel like that's kind of, like degrading Battle Revolution, so I'm sorry, Battle Revolution, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Um, but no, what I mean by that is just it's not a Nuzlocke, it's not like the, it, this, this was not the intended successor um, to Uranium, even though that doesn't mean this series is any less fun, I'm having an absolute blast going through this nostalgia-filled game and just having a good old time with you guys, so 
Now, I'm not saying this series is any less compared to the upcoming series, but what I am saying is that the next upcoming series uh, that's going to be going alongside this one is going to be much more proper, much more similar to Uranium in terms of how it's edited and stuff, like with the intro, animated intro, episode, that kind of thing. Uh, with this series, I've kind of been breaking the mold. I've been kind of doing something different. I've been breaking the format to where I don't have... Um, it's not that same format. It's not like the intro animated because there is no animated intro and then episode it's not like that basically I've just been recording and then editing editing it in the, in whatever I think the funniest way possible would be now also I didn't even mention this I literally haven't talked about the game at all what is this freaking co-op uh, but yo we are rocking out with the other three Pokemon on this rental pass right now we got Dragonair Pidgeotto and another Mon that I totally forgot but I'm sure if I looked at my party Pokemon, I could figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, great boy. What do you think I am, a Dragonite? I don't have wings. Well, I do have little, 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 little. Uh, what, what's the word? Ear wings, I guess. Looking like a Mega Mega Absol, except I'm pretty sure Mega Absol's wings are on his back. I don't know where I was going with that analogy. That really just fell flat. But yeah, we got Rhyhorn here as well for our third Mon. Okay, sweet. So maybe I should switch out. I don't know, Dragon is doing a pretty good job here. I just wish we had Dragon Rage, because I feel like that'd be more effective right now. We're gonna go for the Dragon Rage, try and get that paralysis, because honestly, that'd be kind of clean. This man's tongue is flailing around so much, I'm actually... Oh, yo, speak of the devil and he shall appear. Oh, but he is a cherry berry! Bro, this man's making these plays. This man is making the plays. Oh my goodness. It's not a favorable matchup. Oh my goodness. Okay, look at tongue. Wow, this is getting super intense. But you know, this man's tongue is literally defying gravity. I'm not I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it. So get out of here, look at tongue. Yo, one subtle thing that I really love about this game, and I didn't really notice it until uh, he went for the water pulse. Well, I noticed it obviously before, but I didn't actually recall it until he went for the water pulse. But depending on the type of attack, the health bar has like a little effect on the end as it goes down, um, which I think is super cool. Like the little water effect was like, as it went out, it was super clean. Anyways, we have a little pause, rewind, I can speak English. We have a Clefairy here. I'm gonna go for the Shockwave because I feel like that's gonna be the most effective. I keep, okay, no, I should have gone for the Dragon Rage, or not Dragon Rage, Dragon Breath, because I forget Clefairy is not a fairy type in this game. Fairy type didn't exist. This is a Gen 4 game. Can you guys believe it? This is a Gen freaking 4 game. I really want them to make another Battle Revolution or another Coliseum or some sort of game like this uh, for the Switch to where it's, or actually, no. Don't even make one of these for the Switch. Just ma make this a main series game. Basically take everything that's good about Battle Revolution, like the graphics, uh, the animations, the way the battles play out, the actual sizes of the Pokemon. Basically take a console Coliseum style game, make it HD, make it freaking beautiful, put it on the Switch, but then, you know, actually make it like a, a main series game too. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully I'm describing it right. Basically just take a main series game and make it look like this, except on the Switch. Um, hopefully that, that kind of makes sense, because honestly, my, my favorite part about this game, there's, there really isn't much to this game, if I'm being totally honest with you guys, and if you guys have played the game, you guys know what I'm talking about, there is, there is no story, there is no, there is no plot, uh, there's no evil team, it's literally you just battle, uh, and that's basically the extent of it, you just go through, and you try and beat all the different coliseums, and there's like certain challenges, and there's like little, little aspects to every single Coliseum that make it pretty different. Uh, I feel like I should switch out. I don't know, I feel like Dragonair's kind of having a hard time here. We're going at a pretty slow pace. I'm gonna try and switch into Rhyhorn here. Or not, not try, I'm actually going to switch into Rhyhorn. He's gonna go for the double step of my Rhyhorn, bro, that's super effective. Or no, it's not. <laughs> Never mind, I was thinking of Wake Up Slap. Okay, Rhyhorn, here's what we're gonna do. We have Dig, Horn Attack, Ice Fang, and Protect. Um, I feel like Dig would be the most effective, it's gonna be Stab. Not gonna lie, these movesets are really weird. And this man keeps going for Cosmic Powers. His defense is through the roof, I'm a little bit scared. And also he's wagging his hands back and forth, it seems like he's doing a double metronome, which is equally as intimidating. He's gonna go for the double slab, psych boy! I'm grounded! I'm in the ground! Yo! Like, look at this animation! Why don't the real, like, main series games look like this? I, I wish, I wish, if I were to have one hope, for the next upcoming Switch game, which is rumored to be Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I'm sure you guys have heard of it by now. Uh, it's been going all over Twitter, and it seems like those are the names based on just like the sheer amount of um, evidence that's supporting that. It's not officially confirmed. It's not confirmed yet, but that's what it's seeming like. So, 
If I had to request one big thing, one feature, one thing to be included, I would want it to be, um, I would want the, well, first of all, I want it to be HD, 100%. Which is basically a given if it's going to be on the Switch. But I want it to be an HD, super awesome looking Pokemon game. Because we have never had an HD main series game. And I think that's just a shame. Like, I want to be able to pull my Pokemon main series game on my on my TV screen. I don't want to dock my Switch and have it look freaking gorgeous on my TV. That's what I want. Um, okay, so this man is a lone ranger. Honestly, I haven't even been looking at the opposing teams, which is probably a mistake. I definitely got to start doing that moving forward because, uh... That's going to help us out big time. We got Lombre, Apom, Nidorina, Dustox, Rhyhorn, and Mawile. So we have a lot of fire weaknesses. Well, by a lot, I mean two. So we'll bring Charmeleon. And then we'll bring Wartorl just in case he rocks out with that Rhyhorn. Uh, and then we'll bring Pidgeot. For, for like Basically, specifically for the Lombre. And also, Pidgeot can do damage to the Dustox. And also, we didn't really get the chance to use Pidgeot yet. So I do want to rock out with that. Uh, also, side note, these episodes are probably going to be about 30 minutes. I think that's going to be like the, the cutoff time. Uh, just so you guys are aware, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the previous episode. Because I'm still not done editing the previous episode. I'm about like maybe halfway through. Maybe if, if I'm being generous. I've been doing a lot of work on it. Um, trying to make it as interesting as possible. I'm gonna go for the Fire Fang. I actually, I could have went for the Sunny Day and started to set up. Then the Fire Fang would be boosted. But you know what? I don't think we need. Um, I don't think we need those complicated strats just yet. This is a pretty, pretty early game. All right, we're having a pretty easy time. Last episode, last episode was just BS. Uh, so I'm not even gonna consider that me having a hard time. Well, I did have a hard time, but it was because of BS. Anyways, you guys get my point. We got Need Arena here. Yo, question of the day. Um, it's a mental tug of war as they anticipate each other's move. You like tug of war? <laughs> Actually, no, no. I was just trying to like make a random question of the day based on the announcer. Uh, but instead of that, let me know down below what's your favorite playground game. All right, like you're in elementary school, you're out on the playground. What is your go-to game? What is the game that you run to? What is the game that you're sprinting out of the the, the, the school doors in order to get your hands on the object that, that requires you to play that game? Uh, like for me, it was always Foursquare. I I love Foursquare. I used to be the Foursquare champion back in middle school and, and well, not middle school because in middle school we didn't have recess. Uh, elementary school, I used to literally be the Foursquare god. Uh, you guys don't even understand. I... I killed it in Foursquare, and you had like all these different techniques people would make based on um, based on like certain tactics. Like there was this one move I specifically remember called Snake Eyes, where you would look at a square, right? And but by the way, do, I'm assuming all of you guys know what Foursquare is, right? Or should I explain what Foursquare is before I go further in detail? Because I there might actually be people who don't know what Foursquare is, and that's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy, but I can understand why why maybe you wouldn't. But anyways, four square, right? You got four squares. Self-explanatory. You have one dodgeball, and there's a person per square. And then basically, right, you have to hit the ball. You got to bounce the ball and then hit the ball into opposing squares. Um, and then if it double bounces, then the person, the, the box that it double bounced in, whoever person is in that box is out. It's like, it's like tennis. Kinda. It's like tennis, but with a dodgeball, and there's four courts. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. I, I'm i really not sure how much sense that, that made. But, yeah. So the game is freaking incredible. Long story short, though, I had this move called Snake Eyes. And it wasn't my specific move. I can't really take ownership over it. Because I'm pretty sure it was like, um... I'm pretty sure it was a collective thing. Like, like I'm pretty sure a bunch of the kids came up with it. And then we just all kind of stole it from each other. But Snake Eyes, right? You would look at a square. And then... You would, when the ball came to you, you would look at that square, and then instead of hitting it to the square you were looking at, you would subvert it, and go BWAP, and then hit it over to the square next to you, or the square over there. Basically, you would try to catch the person in those squares off guard, thinking that you weren't going to hit it to them, uh, but in reality, you were. And that's the plot twist. So, I, I don't know. Hopefully you guys kind of get what I'm putting down. Um, super, super cool move. I used to use it very effectively. I, I ruined a lot of kids' careers back in the day, back in the playground. It was actually absurd. No, Dust Talks, more like, Dust Gone! Get out of here. I feel like every single LP, I have to make one of those jokes. It's a total victory for the, re am I the red corner or the blue corner? I think I'm the blue corner. Yeah, no, I'm the blue corner. Totally. Or, no, I'm the red corner. It confused me because my name was blue, but the text was red. The, the you win text was red. That's so weird. 
Yo, we might be able to finish the Gateway Coliseum today. I don't know how long uh, these Coliseums are, but we're literally four battles in. All right, so we're making what I like to call progress. So her team, we have a lot of fire weaknesses right off the bat. I'm going to go Charmeleon. Because Silcoon, Kakuna, Delibird, Sunflora, all weak to fire. Uh, and then Rhyhorn. I'm going to bring Ivysaur this time instead of War Turtle because I brought War Turtle last time. And then we'll scoop up... Uh, we'll scoop up right... Or, no. No. Uh, B. Let's go Pidgeot. Let's go, let's go Pidgeot because we still haven't really been able to use Pidgeot. So let's rock out with that. I, I basically... I've been trying to, like, look at the teams and I've been basing it solely on type effectiveness. Um, so like I'll look at the teams and I'll, I'll, I'll say, okay, you're weak to that, weak to that, weak to that. And then I'll just make sure I have a move on our team at somewhere, somewhere in the team will have a move to handle every single Pokemon. That's kind of my goal. Kakuna, yo, Kakuna, shout out to Soul Link. Yo, this man's about to get roasted. You know what? I'm going to play up the strat because this man is so weak to fire. I'm going to get the sunny day up and I absolutely love the sunny day animation. Everything gets so bright and just the game, the game and or not the game animations. Um, the battle animations in this game, I love them so much. Like, just every single aspect of these of these animations just gives me nostalgia. Man, and I, I cannot wait till we start getting into some of the more serious battles because this game actually gets pretty tough. Like, there there comes a point where um where it's it's tough. I remember well maybe it was just tough from what I remember it, because I was a kid, I didn't really know a lot about Pokemon at the time. Uh, but from what I remember, there was especially the, the courtyard coliseum. I think was the Coliseum that I had the most difficult difficulty with. I used to, I used to spend like hours on that Coliseum just trying to do a sliver of damage, just trying to whittle it down. Uh, but it was tough. I don't know if, just, if it was just because of the team I had or whatever it may be, but uh, I specifically remember like the Neon Coliseum has this really cool mechanic where the Pokemon you get are randomized based on like a, on, on a wheel, which is super super cool. Uh, and I think we're definitely gonna have to I'm gonna have to go through like like one of my gen 4 save files pretty soon here in one of these upcoming episodes Just so we can have a lot more variety in the game because outside of these two rental passes And then I think there's like four other rental passes you can unlock outside of those other four um, That is it for the Pokemon that are natively built into this game Otherwise you have to import them from diamond and pearl so I'm probably gonna try and find one of my old save files and just see if See if I have some mons in there you know, because I probably have, like, if I went through and looked at all my Gen 4 save files, I could probably find a save file with some pretty powerful stuff in there. You know, I don't want to, like, import anything too overpowered. I want to have some sort of a fight here. Um, and, and honestly, I, I forgot, like, a lot of how this game balances itself out. Um, that was the easiest battle of our career. <laughs> you know, first episode, we only got one battle done, but we've, we've literally done, like, three or four battles just in this one episode. If that's not progress, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. I mean, then again, the last episode, we had to deal with, like, the preliminary stuff. But I'm really, really happy that we're getting a lot done in today's episode. Oh, is this the, is this the leader? Wait. Traveling guy, Cedric. Okay, no, it's not. It's not. Okay. I thought for a second it was, um, it was the boss. Because every single Coliseum has this boss. Uh, and, and some of them are super, super interesting and super cool. We got Luxio, Vibraba, Apom, Weeping Paul. Where did that come from? Weeping Bell, Curlia, Pidgeotto. Okay, we'll rock out with the Rhyhorn. No. Um, I take it back. This guy, this guy seems like an oof. I'm gonna go with the Dragonair. Leave with the Dragonair. I'll bring... Does Ry I don't even think Rhyhorn has any rock type attacks. Yeah. Oh, no, but he has Ice Fang. Okay, that could be helpful. That could be helpful. We'll go with Rhyhorn. And we'll grab... Pidgeot. Oh! Oh, it, it is a Pidgeot, not a Pidgeotto. I kept thinking Pidgeotto. I don't know why. I think it's just because all the other Pokemon aren't fully evolved. So for us to have just a random Pidgeot was a little bit weird to me. Um, you know, I genuinely didn't didn't even realize it was a Pidgeot. Like, I, I kept thinking Pidgeotto in my mind every time I brought it up. Anyways, Cedric's here. Yo, I like your goggles, my guy. Those are kind of like the nostalgia goggles I have on. Except they're actually on my face, not on my hat. We have Dragonair here. I'm going to go for the Dragon Breath real quick and just annihilate this Apom. Apom, I'm sorry. I I really, really feel bad. He's going to go for the Rock Smash. Bro, what rocks are you smashing out? Bro, okay, first of all, that was a crit. Second of all, he did it with his tail. I respect that. I respect that. You see, that's what I'm talking about with this game. Just like every Pokemon is so lively and it's just, it's cool, man. I, I want them to bring all the good aspects of this game over into a main series game on the Switch. Uh, but yeah, no, going back to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. 
it might be actually confirmed by the time this video drops because I'm recording this video way ahead of time, but um, yeah, no, it's been going all over Twitter lately and it seems super, 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 super cool. Like I am, I am pumped. I am, I am hyped. But all we know basically is the name and that it's supposed to be a Kanto remake. So, I mean, I'm not opposed. I was talking about it on Twitter, but uh, by the way, if you guys want to follow me at Ashford Videos, shameless plug. I was talking about it over on Twitter, but I'm not opposed to going back to Kanto. The, uh, the only thing for me is I want them to really change it up, especially with it being on a new console, especially with all the capabilities, uh, capabilities of the Switch. I don't want it to be like an Oras. I don't want it to be like a, a, a Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. I want it to be something totally new. I want them to change up the formula. And I know that's a lot a lot to ask, especially from Pokemon, because they've had the same stable formula for like 20 years. But I would like to see some sort of change, uh, even if it's just slight. Like, um... Like, uh, I would say there's like a spectrum of level of changes, right? So like on the highest and like the most, the, the biggest change would be like making the, the game like an open world concept and making the game uh, to where like the battle system is kind of the same, but like there's a lot more exploration involved, it's less linear. Like I would love to see something like that where it's more like a Breath of the Wild approach. Um, but I, I doubt that would happen just because Pokemon is really, really adamant about their, their format. Uh, so like I would say that's on the, like the top of the spectrum bottom of the spectrum would be like I don't know like like what gen 7 did where they switched out the gyms for trials that kind of stuff um, So I don't know I think with gen 7 they they kind of started going in that direction where they were trying to change things up a little bit Mix around the formula and I think it worked pretty well like I think trials were I think trials were a good addition to Sun and Moon especially considering like the environment that Alola is uh, but, I, I don't know. I don't know what they'll do moving forward. It, it honestly is all up in the air. And especially with the titles being so... We're probably gonna die. Yo! Yo! Yo, Dragonair, look at you come through! Look at you come through! Annihilate this man! Send him back to the Shadow Realm! Oh, he's so sad. Oh, I'm sorry, Pom. So yeah, they probably won't change the format that drastically. But I would like to see them do it. I'd like to see them mix things up. Just because I think that'd be really interesting and uh, really cool, and I think having it on the new console with the Switch is like, it's like the perfect place to do it, you know? This man's going for Flash, uh, I really don't respect him as much anymore, but just look at the size of Dragonair. Like, I love how, especially compared to the Trainer Sprite, I love how the Pokemon are actual size. Like, that that just makes this game so good. Um... Yeah, that's, that's totally, like, nostalgia hitting me in the face. Yo, the crit! Yo! Lux, yo! Get out of here! Dragonair just swept your entire team. This is the easiest episode of my career. This is actually the easiest episode of my career. GG. Great freaking game. But yo, let me know down below. Do you guys dig the lighting? Are you guys, are you guys liking this? The only downside is that, yeah, the frame rate... Uh, the frame rate... I'm moving my hand around just to test it. The frame rate is kind of... Uh, it's not ideal. I wish it was better. I mean, do what's so weird? I was actually testing it before the stream. Or, stream. Wow. This is not a stream. <laughs> I'm, like, finally coming to this realization. I'm like... Oh, fuck. There's not a chat. Uh, side note. This girl literally looks exactly like me, except with a different color hair. Like, this girl is actually twins with me. Anyways, though. What I noticed is when I put my like uh hand up to the camera look at how smooth the frame rate is now but then when i back up the exposure kind of lets up and then it's a little bit choppier i'm really not a fan of that i i wish i wish i could fix it for you dudes and i'm gonna keep messing around with it uh for sure but anyways we got stable here with no weaknesses we got gloom far-fetched yama skip bloom and mothem so once again a huge fire type weakness let's just leave with charmeleon um Actually, it could be a flying type weakness too. Let's let's leave with Pidgeot. Let's leave with Pidgeot because then the ghost type moves from Sableye wouldn't affect us. Um, and yeah, Charmeleon could handle the Gloom, Yanma, Skip, Bloom, and Mothem, but Pidgeot can also do that. So we're gonna rock out with that. I'm gonna casually hang on. I did not mean to choose Dragonair. Um, we'll grab Charmeleon too because why not? He could really do a number on this team. And no, I don't want Ivysaur. Um, let's do Rhyhorn. Let's do Rhyhorn. I'm, I'm mainly afraid of that Sableye. I think Sableye's kind of like the ace of this team. Also, it said that she was one of the three sisters. So I'm not sure if we're like in the final stages of uh, of this Coliseum, but I think we are. No, oh, the semifinal. Oh, shoot. We are literally about to wrap up this Coliseum in the second episode. Look at us go. Yo, she's... Look, we're, what the... What is... What? 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 We're twins. She literally just stole my face. 
That's not cool. We're gonna go for the aerial ace. Yo, look at Pidgeot. Look at my man. Look at my man. You see, that's a tiny bird. This is a real bird. Also, side note, Farfetch's eyebrows are on like the same level as mine. And that's a little bit scary. Side note, there's a little bit of an- Look at him balance his little- Oh, it's so cute. That's actually so cute. I forgot he did that. Side note, there was an alert noise. Thank you to whoever just subbed. Um, I actually, I might have to put like my alerts on this scene. Because I, I totally forgot about that. But I totally should do that. To where the alerts pop up because um we were doing it in uranium and i was able to shout you guys out if you happen to sub like while i was recording and that was super cool i would go for the aerial ace push this man off i'm the big bird this man is this man's a tiny little 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 eyebrow bird yo look at look at these eyebrows look at those eyebrows tell me we're not twins which actually i'm a little bit embarrassed to be twins with him i mean he's cute but like mm, these eyebrows are <laughs> These eyebrows are no joke, man. These eyebrows are no joke. But yeah, speaking of the eyebrows, side note, uh, in case you guys were curious for whatever reason, these eyebrows, that is my that is my natural hair color. That is my natural hair color. I have black eyebrows and blonde hair, and this is all natural. Um, like, Because like a lot of people think I either dyed my hair or I dyed my eyebrows for whatever reason, but no, it's li literally, I just, I, I was born like this. Also, my eyebrows are just like naturally really, really, really bushy. He's going for Sonic Boom, but he missed! Wow, what a scrub! Guess what? Aerial Ace doesn't miss! Get fisted! Dude, Pidgeot is actually broken. I didn't even realize we had a fully evolved Pokemon, because I thought he was a Pidgeotto. Yo, this is beautiful. This is beautiful, though. Hi, Key! Pidgeotto and Pidgeot are very similar. They are, they are very similar mons, in general. I think that's, like, my biggest complaint with the Pidgey line, is that, uh... I don't know, I feel like there's not enough, like... Like... Like, like differing the evolutions, you know? I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just me. I, if I looked at them side by side, it'd be super obvious, I'm sure. But just like in general, they, they all look very alike. Which is, it makes sense because they're a part of the same evolution family. But it's, compared to a lot of other evolutions out there, it's um, it's, it's a pretty different dynamic. Anyways, though, is set. Oh, wait, no, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to remember his dialogue and then do it alongside him. But I, it's been so long, I can't, I can't remember it. Yo, Crystal, get out of here. You're literally my evil clone. Alright? I basically did a Shadow Clone Jutsu. I'm basically Naruto. Get out of here. Anyways, though, um, I think we're gonna wrap this episode up right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are freaking beautiful. I really, really appreciate your support. Hopefully, you guys are digging the series. I honestly don't know until I obviously post it. I'm recording these ahead of time. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are freaking beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I will see you guys in the next episode where we're gonna be wrapping up Gateway Galaxy. And Gateway Galaxy, what is this, Mario? We're going to be wrapping up Gateway Coliseum and then moving on to the next Coliseum in line, which I'm pretty sure is Sunset. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. The stupidest dance move I've ever seen. Who put you on the planet? <sighs>